Hey everybody, in today's video I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to make some Gaini style pera. Now in today's video I'm not doing the normal version made with white sugar, I'm going to be making it with brown sugar instead. I wanted to show you all the little difference and that beautiful dark color that you'll get if you use brown sugar. So let's get into this recipe, I'll share my tips and tricks, and you can put this together for the festival of Shivratri that is happening this coming weekend. So the first thing that we're going to do is start off with a can of evaporated milk. Now the real traditional Guyanese way to make pera is to use fresh cow's milk. However, I do not have access to fresh cow's milk. I have access to this evaporated milk, that's why I'm using it. You can use the whole milk, however, I still feel that it's not rich enough when you use whole milk. When you use the evaporated milk, it's more rich. Into a heavy bottom pot or a heavy bottom pan, I'm going to be going in with that can of evaporated milk. And to make pera, the measurement is very, very simple. It is equal parts milk. To sugar and like I said whenever you make pera it's equal amounts of sugar to the milk so I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my can with some brown sugar you can either use the demerara brown sugar or you can use regular um, brown sugar from the grocery store whatever works for you just make sure you fill up that can all the way to the top equal to how much milk was in there once you get that sugar measured out you're gonna go ahead and put it into the pan with the milk and you're gonna keep on stirring everything together on a medium to medium high heat until it comes to a boil once it gets to a boil, you need to lower that heat and keep on boiling it down until it's thick. So my mixture finally came up to a rolling boil on that medium, medium high heat. I went ahead and I reduced it to a medium to medium low heat at this point, and I'm going to allow it to boil until it is nice and thick. As you all can see, that sugar has started to melt perfectly. Make sure during this entire process, you keep on stirring because this is very quick to catch or burn at the bottom. And every once in a while, you're going to see that this mixture starts to bubble up a lot too much in the pan. You just have to keep on making sure to stir it because if this bubbles over, it's going to make such a big mess on your stove. Everything gets all sticky and caked on and you don't want that. So keep on stirring vigorously and I'll show you guys what it looks like in the next step. All right, so my mixture has been bubbling for about a 15 minutes at this point. And as you all can see, it's nice and thick and it's definitely gotten darker than it was before. So I'm going to show you all how we're going to test this um, pera. So I have a little bowl of ice water off to the side here and I'm just taking the tiniest little dollop of that pera mixture that we've been making and I'm going to test it out. You can see that as I'm picking this piece up it's not holding together very well. It's like very very soft, too soft in fact. And if I were to start rolling the pera now it would be too loose and it would be too chewy. That's not what we want. We want a nice smooth melt in your mouth texture and almost candy like texture when we're biting into it. So we're going to have to boil this for a longer time. So I wanted to mention that I lowered my heat to more of a low heat at this point because it was starting to get a little darker and I do not want it to burn or catch at the bottom. And it's been bubbling for about another 8 to 10 minutes at this point. So once I put this in my ice water to test it, it's holding together very well. It's still a little bit soft to the touch, but this is exactly what we want. You want it to hold together. If you put it in the ice water and when you take it out, it's just falling apart. It's not good enough. You have to go ahead and let it cook for longer. You're also going to see that when you're stirring it, it's going to be bubbling up vigorously and almost expanding out onto itself like if you were making an actual candy. That's another indication that this pear mixture is done. So like I said, this has been bubbling for about 20 to 25 minutes. The time is going to vary based on your stove, your temperature and the pot that you're using. Over to the side of the pan, I have a baking sheet that I've lined with some parchment paper. Now I will let you know I made a very big mistake. I should have greased my parchment paper in some way because this mixture sticks a lot. Now we all make mistakes in the kitchen but I'm just rolling with it and I'm showing you guys what I did to fix it. But make sure you go ahead and grease whatever surface you're putting these pears onto. I'm just going to keep on putting little dollops down onto the tray and my auntie Chitra has a very good trick for all of you. Buy a little mini ice cream scoop and scoop out your pears that way because it's much easier than using the spoon. But today I'm using the spoon because not everybody has a little ice cream scoop and I just wanted to show you that the same thing works. Now usually when I make pera, I would have beat the mixture in the pan so this way it can get that little gritty texture and dry it out a little bit and it adds some air into the pera to get it nice and hard. This is my auntie Chitra's method of making pera where she just cooks it to the proper texture, she scoops it out onto her surface and then she goes ahead and she rolls it into balls and she presses it down. So you can do it any way that you want. I have my other para recipes on my channel where I show my method, so you can choose the best one for you. But like I said, I did not grease my tray by accident, so they're sticking a little bit, but I'm rolling with it. Everything is fine. Just take like a silicone spoon and just scoop up the mixture, and you can go ahead and start to roll it out. Now, when you're rolling it, you can use a little bit of butter, a little bit of ghee, or some water like I'm doing today, 
and just keep on rolling them until you get them all nice and round and get a nice little indent in the top. So this is what all of my pairs look like after I went ahead and I formed them. Now definitely trust the process. They look soft in the beginning. However, when you roll them out and you let them sit and you stir them in the pot, all of that is drying up the mixture a little bit more. And when you come to this stage, when they finally cool off, you're gonna see that they lighten up. If they lighten up like this, that's how you know that they have crystallized to perfection and they're the right texture on the inside. They're not chewy, they're nice and they're candy-like, exactly what you want. I hope you all give this brown sugar pira recipe a try for this coming Shivratri or any Hindu holiday or just when you want something nice and sweet. If you enjoyed the recipe, leave some comments down below and let me know what you think of it. Please subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Click that bell notification icon so you never miss out on my newest videos. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye everyone.